time is now 8 o'clock. Now the weather. Temperature at 8 o'clock, 68 degrees. Humidity, 82%. The expected high today, around 80. The forecast, showers this morning, clearing later in the day. That's radio for you, close to every member of the family. We awaken to it in the morning, we set our clocks by it, we dress according to the weather reports. We listen to radio for news, for entertainment. It keeps us informed every minute of every day. Most of us depend upon radio more than we know. I know because radio has been my life. My name is Harold Fellows. I'm president of the National Association of Broadcasters. You know, it seems to me the role of radio is underscored by a recent survey which shows that most people in an emergency would turn first to radio to learn the facts. Radio has reached this present place of importance in our lives in a comparatively short span of years. It burst upon the national scene in 1920 with an impact that is being felt more year by year. Radio provided a thread that has drawn the country together. The city dweller and the farmer came to know each other better. News and special events broadcasts have given a sense of participation in the great events of the time. With the speed of light, a handful of crystal set owners learned that Warren G. Harding had been elected president over James Cox, and an exciting new era in communications began. Four years later, radio gave the American people a glimpse of a presidential convention with a realism they'd never had before. Cold print could never begin to describe a scene like this. Nineteen twenty-eight, Smith versus Hoover. Radio continued to develop a splendid tradition of public service, bringing the candidates directly to the voters. People came to recognize the voice of Herbert Hoover, college-trained engineer. And physical strength, and the world should know that if we are to have peace. And the voice of Al Smith from the sidewalks of New York. And I deny it emphatically. And I stand from this platform. Now it's 1933. In this time of despair, radio transmitted a new, encouraging voice. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Throughout the trying days of the Depression, radio brought the heartening voice of the president to the people. Fear is vanishing, and confidence is growing on every side. Out of radio came the national fireside chat. Radio gathered one of the largest audiences in history when Edward VIII abdicated. Without the help, and support of the women I love. Radio brought people closer to great and sometimes tragic events. Radio reporter Herb Morrison was describing the graceful arrival of the Zeppelin Hindenburg at Lakehurst, New Jersey, when suddenly... Four years later, radio reporter John Daly made this shocking announcement. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. The 
December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. During the war, radio rose to new heights, proved it was indispensable with its reports from the battlefronts. It demonstrated to not only how big its scope, but also how big its heart. These British children were sheltered in the United States during the war, an ocean away from their families, but radio spanned that ocean. Doreen, what's this pink dress you've got on? Who gave you that? Got that for me. Did she? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Did you get the cable and the um, presents for your birthday? Yes. Yeah. After World War II came Cold War. The free countries looked to the United States for leadership, and it became more vital for the American people to be informed of happenings all over the world. Radio responded to the challenge by increasing its news coverage. No matter where it happens, Singapore, Paris, or Washington, D.C., radio is first with the news. It teams up with the wire services to keep you informed instantly constantly. And with the election of Dwight D. Eisenhower, a new dimension was added to radio's record of public service. President Eisenhower was the first to permit his news conferences to be broadcast. Thus, radio became vital to America. It has tuned us into the world and national news. As it grew, it became the very heartbeat of the community. And today, for hundreds of communities, the local radio station is the only source of immediate news. In recent years, the number of radio stations has more than doubled. Radio's voice reaches everywhere throughout the land, into almost every car, into almost every room where people live and work. One of radio's functions is to act as sentinel, to warn the country in event of air attack. Your local station is part of the warning system called Connell Rat. Here's how it works. If there's an attack, your station will remind you to tune in the Connell Rat frequencies 640 and 1240. On those frequencies, authorities will broadcast instructions as to what to do. Conrad plays a part, too, in weather emergencies. It alerts the people when a storm is approaching, a blizzard, hurricane, or tornado. Warning, a tornado is headed this way. The Weather Bureau has announced a tornado has been sighted 20 miles outside of Lakeville. It may strike this city at about 6.30 p.m. When disaster strikes, your local radio station stands ready to help. Recently, radio reporters in mobile units risked their lives in Dallas, in Kansas, in Missouri, going out into the raging storm. practically every twist and turn of the tornado. They warned people out of its path.
During the floods of California, Oregon, and Connecticut, radio stations turned over their facilities for search and rescue work. Radio helped in cleanup and relief operations. Fire downtown. Radio is on hand with its mobile unit. The studio on wheels has enabled radio to be present at practically any news event, from a political speech to a fire like this. The radio reporter broadcasts right from the scene giving his listeners an on-the-spot account of the fire, the fight to keep it from spreading, the injuries, the damage. When the fire is under control, a first-hand report from the chief. From a fire to a chat with some interesting neighbors. With its speed and flexibility, radio has become an integral part of the community, which means being active in it. Your local radio station, for instance, works with the police to help locate missing persons, to reunite separated families. But radio is more than just a reporter. It's a participant in community life. It often sparks civic improvements, such as slum clearance projects. In Washington, D.C., radio recently led a drive to clean up the Potomac. A Cleveland, Ohio station initiated a plan to relieve midtown traffic congestion. In New Haven, Connecticut, a local station was responsible for getting a ramshackle school rebuilt. In many communities, radio points the way. We all know the importance of education. And so, even at the expense of a tax increase, we owe it to ourselves and our children to build a new school in the Latham section. Fight against cancer, Red Cross drive, somebody dying and a rare blood is needed, radio to the rescue. This is an urgent appeal for type AB negative blood. We've come to take for granted countless other services performed by radio, like broadcasting traffic bulletins. But we'd be lost without them. Reporters in helicopters get a bird's eye view of traffic conditions and relay them to the crawling motorist. Traffic is heavy with up to one hour delays on all major highways leading to the city, but it is moving steadily on secondary roads 3A and 9A. Out of the tangle, into the clear. Radio also acts as your community bulletin board. This is your KNAB community bulletin board. The Madison Junior High monthly PTA meeting is scheduled for 7.30 tomorrow night. On Saturday, the Lions Club holds its annual picnic at Seven Mile Run. Saturday night, a social at the First Methodist Church on Elm Street. And here's an item worth noting, the annual Fireman's Fair. It begins tonight and runs through Sunday. It's being held in the empty lot just across from the old firehouse. Fire Chief Wilkins announces a number of valuable prizes, including a new car to holders of the lucky numbers, a chance for fun and a chance to help a good cause. Radio helps mother by advertising the best buys in town. Today's Best Buy at the Carnet Food Market. Tender chuck roast at 33 cents a pound. At Allen's Shoe Emporium, a gigantic sale on children's shoes. And here's one more special for today. Radio helps her shop thriftily by keeping her informed of sales. All through the day and every day, your radio is ready to serve. 
Wherever you travel, radio is doing its job. It's everywhere. On the farm, in the office, in the barber shop. Indoors and out, at work or at play, radio is always with us in the busiest and the loneliest parts of America. That's the story of radio service. Service to the family, to the community, to the whole country. From its very birth, radio has been a public servant. It will continue its dedicated service throughout the years to come.